The year is 1954, and various parts of the world are still recovering from the Second World War, a massive conflict which pushed scientists into creating weapons of mass destruction, which basically unlocked mankind's key into becoming gods of their own extinction. Nuclear weapons changed the way that we see war, but it also changed what we fear. This fear manifested itself into the movie screen as a giant, radioactive, flame-breathing lizard known as Godzilla. And from that moment on, there was no going back. Spanning over 35 films, hundreds of comic book issues, to manga and video games alike, Godzilla has seen quite the massive amount of battles, incredible feats, and downplay over the years, and has long been believed to be the king of the monsters and one of the strongest kaiju of all time. However, there are so many different versions with amazing demonstrations of power that it does raise up the question. Who are the strongest versions of Godzilla? Is he able to destroy planets, survive black holes, to even going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the most powerful superheroes of all time? Or is he, at the end of the day, just an overhyped giant lizard? Well, I decided to go over the films, comic books, and other stuff to help determine who truly is the strongest version of Godzilla. After months of research, we're getting this over and done with, finally, and I really hope that you will all enjoy. Originally, this was going to be like one long video, but there's just way too much information to cover, so I will be splitting this into two parts. Before we begin, if you guys want to see future Godzilla videos alongside Dragon Ball Z, Bleach, SCP, Marvel, and DC content from me down the line, then I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Thanks. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in to see what Godzilla's depth of power truly is. Uh, Godzilla's the weakest on the list because he sucks. Let's move on. Starting off our list is Shin Godzilla, a bizarre frill shark looking creature that made me go like, what the hell? I mean, you can't tell me that it does not look peculiar. This Godzilla was born as a result of a marine creature feeding on radioactive waste left at the bottom of the sea. It became composed of new elements entirely, some extremely toxic to humans such as anime Twitter arguments, Belle Delphine's bathwater, and of course, stale Funyuns. End of the day though, it gave it biological advantages never seen before on Earth, as it is able to quickly mutate limbs and become more of a land-based organism in a few seconds. And like insects, it undergoes through numerous forms, each one more and more reminiscent of Godzilla than the last. Its skin is so durable that missiles, artillery barrages, and thousands of high-caliber chopper gunner rounds don't do anything against it. And of course, it wouldn't be Godzilla if it didn't have access to one of its most iconic weapons of all time, the Atomic Breath. Although far from the level of other Godzillas on this list, Shin does have a really interesting adaptation because he is able to fire it from its dorsal plates and its tail. And its breath is not too bad because it was able to destroy dozens of buildings and city blocks with ease. Its beam can reach hundreds of meters in mere seconds, and it was also able to quickly destroy stealth bombers, which can fly up to 15,000 meters high, or for the normies who don't use the metric system, about 50,000 feet. If we said it took like 5 seconds for the blast to actually reach these bombers, it'd mean it traveled over 3,000 meters per second, which is roughly Mach 9 or hypersonic speeds. Although Shin seems like a terrifying monster, it's pretty lackluster because of its numerous drawbacks. For one, it is really slow, easily one of the slowest Godzillas out there, although to be frank, not as slow as it took for me to make this video, and it is also unable to use its atomic breath for long periods of time. And you know what the worst part is? It requires over two weeks to charge its energy. What's more, it pretty much failed at defeating mankind and it got owned by bombs from stealth bombers. End of the day though, it's still a city level threat. Next up we got Godzilla from Dark Horse Comics, which isn't really anything special to be honest with you. One iteration survived being engulfed in a volcano, while a time traveling Godzilla that was mad pissed off caused the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. An earthquake so devastating with a magnitude of nearly 8 on the Richter scale that it destroyed over 30,000 buildings in an urbanized area of about 21 square miles, easily making it city level at least. The main reason as to why I have this Godzilla over Shin is because for one, it is faster, two, it doesn't take Namek minutes to recharge its energy, and three, it basically went up against much more powerful futuristic weaponry. In 1954, the OG Showa Godzilla was revealed to the world, and from that moment on, the Japanese had made one of the most powerful characters in fiction. Showa Godzilla gets its name from the films releasing during the period of Emperor Hirohito's rule of Japan from 1926 to 1989. 
Showa Godzilla is an ancient relic that is millions of years old and was woken up by humans testing nuclear bombs. So yeah, that map pissed off Godzilla, and that is an understatement. He was able to destroy a 7,500 ton freighter, boil millions of tons of seawater, which uh, through calculations would yield megatons of energy being released, which he was able to bathe in without injury. And of course, it could endure tank shells with no problem, so judging from that, it's at least pebble level. Godzilla was such a huge threat that it destroyed multiple districts and the humans had no choice but to use the Oxygen Destroyer, which essentially splits oxygen atoms apart, releases massive amounts of energy, and makes it so you can't alive anymore. The Oxygen Destroyer will be important later on, but to give you an idea about how devastating it is, it is stated by Dr. Serizawa, its creator, that if a small amount was used, it could kill off everything in Tokyo Bay. Not to mention that if it were used on land, Tokyo would have been decimated, implying that it had the similar destructive range of atomic bombs. Luckily, the second Godzilla in the Showa continuity was spared from this fate, and it showcased a solid amount of feats and abilities in the 14 films that he starred in. Showa Godzilla is able to regenerate, absorb energy, and of course, fire a really powerful atomic blast, which clocks in at 100,000 degrees Celsius, as confirmed by the guidebooks. He can resist millions of volts of electricity, poisonous powder from Mothra, and even venom from a big-ass spider. Speaking of spiders, f*** that shit. In his battle against Mechagodzilla, he basically pulled a pre-crisis Superman and pulled a new power out of his ass to become Magneto's pupil because he was able to turn himself into a magnet to pull metallic objects towards him to trap and defeat Mechagodzilla. However, he only showed this when he was amped by lightning, but you know, still pretty cool nonetheless. And yeah, he deadass lifts, cause he's been able to dragon throw numerous kaiju who weigh anywhere from 20,000 to 50,000 tons. And he's physically broken through a shield that his atomic blast couldn't reach past, meaning that his punches are literally megaton range, scaling from the original Godzilla's blast. You know, he's a pretty fast boy. He's able to keep up with Jets, Gigon, and Rodon, alongside other kaiju who are able to fly at Mach 5 speeds as confirmed in the guidebooks. This would easily make Showa Godzilla's reaction time and combat speeds in the hypersonic ranges, although it can be argued higher going off of Mecha Godzilla's beams, which are stated to literally be light waves, and Godzilla was able to react to them. Here's the thing though, Showa Godzilla is quite inconsistent with his reaction times because he's been able to dodge these beams and attacks before, but then he straight up gets owned by them, so I mean either he doesn't care if he gets hit by them, or the enemies just amp up the speeds, but regardless, he's at least been able to dodge these really fast attacks before. From Gigon to Megalon to Engyrus and King Ghidorah, Godzilla has been able to defeat numerous kaiju with ease and contend with those who had previously smacked him around. Except for Mothra cause she's Bay and literally yeeted him while on his last dying legs. He showcased martial arts and can fly kick even though our fiction blocking physics wouldn't deem it possible, but Godzilla, like a honey badger, doesn't give a shit. Oh yeah, and he can also f***ing propel himself with his own atomic blast, so that's crazy. Although Showa Godzilla is quite impressive, he's implied to being able to be killed by an island-wide explosion, fodder, and it's been consistently shown that monsters during this time need several hours to destroy a city, but arguably Godzilla is able to destroy a large chunk of Tokyo due to the energy output that we've seen from the original Godzilla. Curiously though, there is much higher uh, scaling that can be argued due to the Lauren statements regarding King Ghidorah, who Godzilla scales from. For one, in the Godzilla compendium, it is stated that King Ghidorah is known as a planet destroyer, and in his debut, he was stated to have turned Venus into a desolate wasteland. Although, let's be real here, it'll never be as desolate as a Jump Force servers. Am I right, guys? And before? You know, you know what, Chuck? Look, a lot of us still play Jump Force. I play Jump Force. Like, okay, dog, whatever. But basically, it means that King Ghidorah is capable of raising planet surfaces and essentially life wipe. But it doesn't really mean much since we don't get like a time frame. What's more, in the obscure Zone Fighter TV series, which is canon or at least implied to be canon as it's referenced in official guides, there is a really interesting feat with Ghidorah. You see, Ghidorah used a prism to absorb energy from the sun in such a strong fashion that it made it dim. Even if Ghidorah only absorbed what the sun made in one second, it already have approximately 400 septillion joules, which is enough energy to wipe out entire countries and even continents. So uh, if the sun literally dimmed, it means that Ghidorah must have absorbed vastly more energy than that. But after watching the movies, I realized that it's not as consistent, but you know, it's cool to mention nonetheless.
The year was 1999, and the world was getting ready to enter the new millennium. While some enjoyed the classic PlayStation hits and classic Nickelodeon cartoons, many others panicked over the state of the stock market due to the feared Y2K bug. In which too long didn't read was people's fear that data, money, and stocks would shut down since most computer systems back then only recognized years and dates with two digits, so the year 2000 would be recognized as 1900. Our struggle and fear of what change would come manifested itself once again into the big screen as Godzilla 2000. Or at least that is a connection I made. His debut was pretty short-lived since unlike with Heisei and Showa Godzilla, most of the Millennium movies are not connected in any shape, way, or form. And suffice to say, some versions will scale higher than others, but we'll go over the generally weaker ones first in which you can argue that they would logically scale to the higher ones. One thing that Millennium Godzilla has over some of the other Godzillas on this list is that in relation to its competition, Millennium Goji is vastly superior and at least three kaijus are needed to try to overwhelm him and or defeat him in two of its six films. This is pretty well evident as he slapped Baragon and even Mothra alongside King Ghidorah. However, this version of Godzilla didn't really do anything special and it has such an impressive healing factor that it can regenerate from pulling a cell and basically exploding itself with its atomic breath as we see its heart at the end of the Mothra and Ghidorah film. All of these Godzillas can casually react to supersonic jets and just like with Shin Godzilla, their atomic blast can reach hundreds of meters in basically no time at all. So easily having between supersonic to even hypersonic attack speeds. Speaking of Atomic Blast, Godzilla 2000 showcased the coolest way to use it as he glory killed an alien that tried to copy its DNA and wiped out a massive UFO right afterwards. After doing all that, Godzilla sets Tokyo ablaze and yeah, the movie pretty much ends letting you know that Godzilla killed everyone. The end. In the Kiryu Saga, which is honestly one of my favorites, Godzilla was able to survive being frozen by the Absolute Zero Cannon, which is one of the most overpowered weapons of all time because I mean, not only does it freeze you at a temperature of zero Kelvin, but it also freezes your molecules. Now this feat has the potential to place this specific version of Godzilla much higher on the list, but I would honestly like to take a closer look at it before I make my final judgment. But I'll give you this prospect though, if the absolute zero cannon was real, keep it the f away from me because the only zero that I would want to come towards me is zero too. That's just me though. In 2014, the American film studio Legendary decided to take the wheel behind Godzilla and try their best to not screw it up like with a certain movie that we do not speak of. The career of Godzilla in the MonsterVerse is still young and he still got more to show us, I mean unless he dies to Kong, uh, but he's already showcased far better feats than the vast majority of the Gojis thus far. In the prequel comic, Awakening, Godzilla deadass survives an asteroid colliding on him. The same asteroid that would cause the largest mass extinction event of all time and then mark the end of the Permian period. Uh, rest in peace, Gorgonops. Needless to say, well, I'm gonna say it anyways, those are crazy levels of durability since the size of the impact easily spanned a country. After that, Godzilla dipped into the hollow earth where it went to sleep until the humans decided to wake it up due to their meddling. In attempts to get rid of it, the humans tried to use nuclear bombs, lol, which clearly didn't work, and uh, it casually brushed them off. The two Mutos that it faced in the 2014 film were, of, quite honestly, really little challenge to him. However, in the Aftershock comic, which is after the events of the film, Muto Prime, the mother Muto, got really pissed off and nearly killed Godzilla and would have nearly succeeded if it wasn't for the humans. Even though Godzilla is really powerful, King Ghidorah still slapped the hell out of him even after he got nuclear juice. So Godzilla had to get amped up from absorbing Mothra's life force, in which he was able to release so much energy that even after Ghidorah himself got stronger, Ghidorah still got sent to the Shadow Dimension. Well, not really, he actually died like really, really bad. So, legendary Godzilla as of now is several times above country level, especially since he does skill from Ghidorah, who covered Brazil in a storm by, well, simply existing. Not to mention that Ghidorah alongside the other kaiju were going to essentially reshape the Earth as they liked, and although we don't get an exact time frame, I mean, the characters imply that it's gonna be urgent, so, you know, there you go. This Godzilla is likely to get much more powerful and faster in the future, and he might not be the top dog, but this Godzilla is a damn beast at fatalities. I mean, just look at this. By far, one of the most interesting companies to have gotten a hold of Godzilla is none other than IDW Publishing. 
Just like with Millennium, IDW has many different versions of Godzilla, and very few are worthy of putting on a list. The main IDW Godzilla who appears in Kingdom of Monsters, Ongoing, and Rulers of Earth has quite an interesting portfolio that puts it above Legendary Godzilla. He's defeated King Ghidorah, Biolante, Biolante, Violent Latte, whatever you want to call it. He's held his own against four Kaiju, and even while tired, it defeated several upgraded Mecha Godzillas. It's resisted the Absolute Zero Cannon from Mecha Godzilla, Poisonous Sludge from Hedorah, and even Oxygen Destroying Particles from Destroya. Who is the strongest Godzilla villain, don't add me. His durability is quite nasty since even the weakest kaiju such as Angiris was able to survive a small volcanic eruption in addition to enough TNT to take down Mount Kilimanjaro. Which is definitely not a hyperbole since humans in this verse have created weaponry and explosives strong enough to damage kaiju. Anyways, by using a relative estimate of Mount Kilimanjaro's volume, we can determine that to at least fragment it, you'd need 5.8 gigatons of force or 24 quintillion joules to do so, which is at least island level. The calculation will be in the description below, but you know what the crazier part of this is? That even all of that energy only knocked out Angiris. After receiving energy from a nuclear reactor, Godzilla's battle with Batra and Rodan shook and affected several countries, and although it is an author's statement, it is revealed that the clash was more devastating than the 2004 Indian earthquake and tsunami, which released more energy than thousands of atomic bombs. This statement is backed up because King Caesar's battle with another kaiju destroyed numerous islands as a side effect, and Godzilla has also survived being buried between two mound ranges. Even a slightly unstable shield powered by black hole energy was unable to hold Godzilla back for long. So yeah, he's definitely a stubborn one. Like the Saiyan race from Dragon Ball Z, IDW Godzilla seems to get stronger for no reason all the time, like clearly not because of plot or anything. Even in the middle of battle, without absorbing nuclear energy, he just becomes more powerful. Even while really tired, it was able to fight numerous kaiju hybrids, and it was also able to fight a Space Godzilla alien hybrid that was slapping him and Space Godzilla at the same time. But it eventually mustered up enough energy that it essentially one-shotted it with an atomic blast, which left Space Godzilla befuddled. Hi, uh, I use the big word, guys. At the end of its run, Godzilla, alongside several other kaiju, had to fight a big boss kaiju called Magita, who effortlessly slapped him and the others around. Although it's vague, Godzilla is implied to have absorbed the life energy of other kaiju, which it used to fire a red spiral ray so powerful that it killed Magita. However, it can also make sense that Godzilla did it through his own energy, since even while he was tired, he was still able to one-shot that space Godzilla hybrid. And what's more, one of the artists who I got into contact with told me that since Godzilla had never showcased that type of energy absorption before, that they left it vague as to what he did exactly. So it's possible that Godzilla did do it through his own power as a last resort from his last reserves of energy. Or just simply because plot. Regardless, IDW Godzilla is clearly many times above country level and has pretty much the same speed range as you'd expect. The cool thing is though that he can be argued to be even faster because he did keep up with Mecha King Ghidorah who flew all the way from Earth to the outer ends of the solar system which would translate regardless to FTL reaction times at least. Not to mention that Gigon and Space Godzilla were able to fight and react to each other in outer space while, you know, covering a pretty decent distance. So, as you can see, there's implications that Godzilla is a lot faster. When people say that Godzilla isn't a planet buster, I just assume that it's really bad bait because, I mean, it's basically like saying that Goku or Superman or Thor are not planet busters, even though, hey, there's clearly stuff out there that does validate this. And it lets me know that they did not watch one of Godzilla's most alpha incarnations, which is the one that we see in the last Millennium Era film, Final Wars. Now, I wasn't kidding when I said that Millennium Godzilla needs more than three kaijus in order to defeat him or at least contend with him, as he effortlessly slapped so many kaiju, I mean, Zella got owned with one of the most 2000 soundtracks ever. He made an absolute mockery out of King Caesar, Rodan, and Angiris at the same time while countering their team tactics and martial arts. Even Hedorah and Gigan couldn't do jack to him, and if that wasn't enough, Kaiser Ghidorah's capsule, identified as Gorath early in the film, was stated as being able to wipe out the Earth and shatter it completely if it collided. But Godzilla casually destroyed it with a regular atomic blast. So, you know, that's at least Pebble Plus, I think. 
Godzilla in this film seems to have mastered his tactics against numerous kaiju so well that nothing offered a challenge for him except for Kaiser Ghidorah, who was so powerful that Godzilla needed an amp to overcome him. And let's just say that Godzilla is a damn good dramatic finisher. I mean, look at this. So Final Wars Godzilla is at least Planet Plus since prior to the power boost, Godzilla was already able to wipe out the Earth and obviously Gorath. Unfortunately, even among Godzillas, this is still pretty fodder. The point that I'm trying to get at here is that we're not even at the strongest version of Godzilla and he's already beyond planetary, so yeah. Anyways, that pretty much concludes part 1. Uh, don't worry though, part 2 will be out very soon, and that is when the scaling and the feeds get pretty nasty. We'll be discussing Godzilla's encounters with black holes, his battles against mighty superheroes, and we'll also try to decipher if a certain Lovecraftian Godzilla truly is a multiversal god. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. And yeah, hope you guys stay safe, and I'll catch you. Thoughties next time. Peace out.